So welcome back to Dry Hollow Homestead. It's Danielle. We are in the kitchen because we are going to meal prep a bunch. A bunch. That's what I'm saying. We have a couple trips this summer and obviously I'm pregnant and not exactly loving the kitchen time. So I'm trying to get ahead in some things, but we have a camping trip in a week. So I'm trying to do a few things. So we're gonna make some energy balls. This is my plan. Energy balls, granola, yogurt, muffins, um, English muffins from Costco with the um, Canadian bacon I picked up and maybe beef and bean burritos. Don't know for sure. I got plenty of burritos tortillas but I'm not sure how many eggs we have so we might even if it's not beef and bean it might be sausage egg and cheese burritos so all of this maybe peanut butter and jelly also I don't know whenever we do vacations I like to have some things that are uh, are convenience foods things that we don't normally have every day so I don't usually buy store-bought bread and things like that but camping or vacationing with a large family is expensive, especially even if you want to just go buy fast food, which is awful for you. It would cost us $40 and we would still wouldn't even be full. So instead of doing that, which is always an option and no shame in your game if you do that, um, I like to spend that money on convenience things that I can put together beforehand and take with us uh, because vacation is vacation for me too so I want to make things simple but I also don't want to feel like trash all week so this is a compromise in you know to each their own you might not want to compromise in that way you might want to make everything from scratch ahead of time you go you do you whatever it is but this is how I'm doing it this time I picked up these muffin tins I wanted to get stainless steel this has a non-stick coating on it again I'll be okay with it so I'm going to go ahead and spray some avocado oil. We're going to go ahead and do these uh, things. We're going to make this sandwich. So I'll show you what we do. And this is my plan to get all this done. Most likely it'll be over a couple days <laughs> because I run out of spot pretty early because I still have other things like homeschool and feeding my family still three meals a day and snacks in between. And we are actually done milking though. We have dried the cow up so that she is getting a long break while um, we have summer vacations and stuff this summer. Um, she is not in milk and she will be able to put on weight for that baby that's due here in August. So that isn't part of my, like dairy is not part of my uh, job right now. I don't have any dairy to process. I only have like two gallons in my fridge and we're gonna make yogurt with one of those gallons today or tomorrow, sometime soon. So. Let me show you what I've got going on for these muffins. This English muffin, I don't know what do you call them. A schmuffin, let's call it a schmuffin, okay? Okay, so for these schmuffins, let's go ahead and toast up these English muffins. That's what I'm gonna do. We are also freezing all this. I don't know if I said that. So this is freezer meal. <laughs> We're only camping. This first trip, we're only camping for five days, but I am going to prep as much as possible because I want to, and it's always good. I like uh, meal prepping in the summer. I'm always busy outside, and I hate coming in and taking a break from being out in the garden or what have you, so I appreciate having it, and I'm sure this summer will be no different. So I have the oven preheated to 375. I am melting butter. I don't have a microwave, but you can do that in the microwave if you have one. I'm going to brush the insides of this with butter. And that's homemade, so yay me for that one. As Soon as that is melted, I will brush this with butter. Where is my, here's this, and then we, We'll move on to the next stop. Actually, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and start cracking our eggs in here. I have the little dash egg maker. 
but I'm feeling like that would take way too long. And I said some avocado oil. So like you can do it as cheaply or as you know healthy healthy consciously, health conscious the way you want. So I am going to crack one egg in each hole of this muffin tin. Farm fresh eggs. Yum. I don't think I'm gonna do a duck egg. We have two ducks. One is a female, one is male. Oh, great. See, you distracted me. Started talking to you, and now. All right. You didn't see that. Good grief. All right, you didn't see that. That didn't happen. <clears throat> so, here we go. We're doing it again. What was I saying? I was talking. And then I got distracted. So, duck eggs. Our, we have one female duck. She does lay some eggs for us. We do not love duck eggs as just eggs, like a fried egg. There is a little bit of a different texture to it. Look how pretty. You are seeing this basket of eggs, right? They're so pretty. But we don't mind it in things when you're baking like a dish and you put the duck egg, you never notice. So that's what we kind of reserve those duck eggs for. Oh, I have some in the fridge. Chester, do you mind grabbing the container of eggs in the fridge? I should probably use those up before I use these fresh ones, but we already started this. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> All right, so we have, we get these little, this is what we use for eggs that we needed to wash. Or if I had to uh, see if they are fresh, I usually do that um, in the fridge. These are like the camping things for eggs. Once I wash them, I have, I refrigerate them. That's what you're supposed to do if you wash that bloom off. Um, that I also do that if I've had to check to see if they're fresh and I had to float them, I do that too. So I floated all these, so I had to go ahead and refrigerate them. So I don't love using refrigerated eggs most of the time because they just have a better, they fry up better in things whenever they are room temperature instead. Well, he looked a little cloudy. I wonder why. We might. Okay. That's a pretty one. Yeah, that's my favorite. The little speckled one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Awesome. So we have that many. That we're going to sprinkle with salt. And for some time, I don't know how long. We will see. But my butter is melted. So I can go ahead and start with my next batch of. English muffins. Schmuffins. Muffins. So I did buy, where are we here? I did go ahead and buy the um, cheese from Walmart. As you guys know, I have plenty of my own cheese, but we're not using that. I'm going to go convenience all the way and not use up ours. But this is homemade butter, so I haven't started buying any store bought butter yet. We have quite a backup, and um, I will for things soon but not yet we will get there yes I'm making some stuff for our camping trip okay so I'm going to go ahead and slice up the rest of these English muffins open them up and then I have a big thing of sausage. I don't know how much, how many pounds that is. It's like three pounds, I think. That's my guesstimation of the Jimmy Dean All Natural. This stuff we got at Sharp Shopper, and I'm sure it's not the cleanest, but when it's gonna be in something like this, I don't worry about um, using our, our home butchered 
I just feel like we'll, we'll use that better. It's fine. Like I said, you do you, whatever you have and what to do. So we also have those eggs coming out of the oven from the muffin tins. They look good. And I'm loading up the next batch of my English muffins to toast. And then um, I would say if I was to do this over again, my little dash egg maker definitely would make a much lower profile, <laughs> just a shorter egg, which would help with the freezing and the thawing. Uh, while we were camping, we we're already back from our camping trip, but while we were camping, there is a microwave in there, so I do use the microwave for when we're camping, and uh, it just took a little bit longer than I wanted to actually get that thawed out and warmed up because the eggs were so thick, but um, it did work just oh, fine. I'm going to try to put a piece of cheese on each one of these. Egg. Well, there you go. I don't know if it matters anyway. You gotta do it. Guess it does, huh? Alright, should we? Yeah. There's a top and a bottom. A clear top and a clear bottom. Where are the chicken feed? Uh, in the barn? Mm-hmm. Okay. The chickens. I just flash froze these as the sandwiches. And then we moved on to making protein balls. Um, cookie balls, my kids call them. But there's chocolate chips, oatmeal, vanilla, honey, peanut butter, flaxseed, coconut. And I will give you the directions and ingredients for these things in the description box. Um, and a flax. I said flax. Chia seeds also. So here's a little thing about me and this food processor. We've only been friends for a couple months. Maybe a month and a half. So far, I'm not impressed. I've I've contemplated taking it back. So we're going to say two cups of peanut butter in here. Um, yeah. I'm not going to be Everything precise. I do I've actually never used this thing. A lot. Was, <laughs> My ingredients really sure are like price four or five cups of things all the time. And it couldn't handle it. I had to, I started in the food processor and then I had to pull it, all of it out, dump it into another bowl and mix it by hand. And that worked just fine. And I dirtied up the food processor for nothing. So tell me in the description box or in the comments if you actually use your food processor and is, am I just doing too much? Um, I do like it for shredding cheese. I've used it for cheese and like the carrots. I, I actually made in this meal prep, I also made a carrot cake muffin thing. And I did the carrots in a matter of no time in my food processor. Uh, but I didn't show you this because I didn't show you that part because this video was already really long <laughs> and I, the, an hour is plenty of time. So I am putting the chocolate chip. So yeah, let me know what you think in the description box. So we have honey from our bees, but I'm trying to use up the stuff we bought at Costco. And I'm trying to finish it up, but it has crystallized. So I end up needing to put it in some warm water. Yeah. All right, I am tired of trying to get the honey out of that. We're just going to get the honey out of here. <laughs> this is actually from our honey from our honeybees. Times in this by four and it calls for one teaspoon so I'm just gonna say that that's good. So here we are dumping all this protein ball mix into the bowl, which this is my Ohio State wear bowl. I use it for everything, so I should have just started with that and not been screwing around with anything else. I am just going to make a bunch of little balls and I'm going to flash freeze these. I know that my kids ate at least half of them before we even left for our camping trip and a lot of them that day too. This should be our last batch. Butter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
perfect and now it's from Barbie. Well, I'm asking how much that was. You know how I measure stuff? I don't. I don't. It just always ends up being perfect. But that's what I got. Okay, back in the oven. This is my last batch. Bring these. Okay, so we are just assembling the rest of these schmuffins. I tried to get a top and a bottom together, and so, you know, two tops, two bottoms, you know how it works. Uh, egg, cheese, store-bought cheese, unfortunately, but, you know, it's going in the freezer, so we went, whatever. And then our Canadian ham. And these are pretty good, I have to say, but uh, I don't think I'll make them again. <laughs> it just was time-consuming. I, I like meal-prepped items okay but it's never as good as when it's fresh so these are like just for emergency situations when a mom just does not want to do anything else but they worked really good for our camping trip it was a success so i have ran out of that store-bought cheese so i'm going to go ahead and start putting my homemade cheddar do little slices of homemade cheddar on these um this cheddar, I didn't know what it was for sure, so it did not end up uh, being a very aged cheddar, but it works fine for something like this. And Daisy was helping me by eating it and slicing some cheese with me. This slicer makes it really thin, and for some reason the kids really enjoy with the cheese whenever it's sliced really thin like that. So I'm going to go ahead and shred up the majority of the rest of this cheese be for our sausage, egg, and cheese burritos that we're going to be making also. I should have just did this in my, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the thing that I have issues with. What's it called? The food processor. But I didn't, and that was dumb of me. But So I sat here and did this for a very long time. Okay, we're going to keep assembling these schmuffins. I even have more of these in the freezer. We took some camping with us, and then we have a whole nother round, a bag of them in the freezer. But like I said, I think I would take the time to do it in the dash little egg maker next time, just so the, mu the muffin tin did okay. It just made really tall eggs. I know, my dryer is breaking, so if you can hear that loud noise in the background. Um, we are about to go on vacation, like I said, and we have to wash up a bunch of clothes. It is raining, <laughs> dreary, and um, we need to dry clothes. So for almost a whole month, I, so this is my second load that I've dried in the dryer. Um, I have been doing only uh, line drying. Sorry, words, sometimes, it's bad, it's hard, it's hard sometimes. Uh, but because we need to get these clothes done, we have a lot going on this week. Um, and the rain is, this is when I can do it and the rain is not holding off for us. We're gonna have to use our dryer today. So, not the end of the world, shouldn't make a ton of difference, but my dryer is going out. So you could probably hear that in the background. So these are those uh, energy balls. We have flash frozen them. <laughs> these things are very, and I'm going to go ahead and keep these in the freezer until we leave for vacation. So another one of our recipes are done. So we have our energy balls and our, what was that? Uh, the English muffins. Next, we're going to put, assemble our burritos, but I'm gonna take time right now to clean up my kitchen before we do that. Okay. I'm going to drop you down, drop it down low, get a little better angle. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm washing up these dishes over here, but I'm going to go ahead and start some milk being made into yogurt. This is the very last of our milk. Well, this is, I have like half of a gallon. I always go use my instant pot. You don't have to, but it's just really simple. Um, but... Let me go through the steps with you to make yogurt. In my Instapot, 
I go ahead and sanitize it before I put my milk in it just by running hot water and pressure uh, cook for like one or two minutes. That just kind of sanitizes everything. So I'm going to dump that water out. And then I'm going to pour my milk in there. I go ahead and do one whole gallon because I eat a little bit of yogurt and I... Then we, for this machine, it has a yogurt setting. Now if you don't have a yogurt setting, you can just put, put it on saute and get that temperature up. I believe it's supposed to be 180. I haven't checked it completely. I'm not too worried about that. You just kind of want to kill off any other um, cultures that could be there because you really want it to taste like a yogurt. Okay, yogurt, boil. We want boil, so start. We're gonna let this boil. You can't put the, put your milk uh, lid, your like pressure canning lid all the way on there. But you don't need to do it in an Instapot. This step you could do on the stove. You just want to get it up to about 175, 178, 180. And I think it needs to be held for about 10 minutes is what it's supposed to be. I'm never particular enough to check. Um, and that just gets it all the culture killed except what we add. So once you get it up to that temperature, you're going to cool it back down to 112, 115. And then you're going to add your culture, which will be yogurt from your previous batch, or you can buy actual cultures in the store, or like New England cheese making. And I'll show you when I add that. Um, and then you incubate it. At that temperature, you know what, it's not, you know, you don't have to be too worried about it. Just kind of incubate it a little bit overnight. Now the Instapot does that for you. For so many hours, it'll keep it at that temperature. You can also just stick it in the oven with the light on to keep it at that temperature, not turning it on at all. Or a dehydrator, you can set it to like 110, 105 or something like that and leave it in there. I've seen people put them in the cooler uh, once they have, have that at the right temperature and added the yogurt, just put them in containers and set them in a cooler to kind of keep that temperature. Wrap them with, with towels and keep that temperature the same for about 10 hours or as long as 24 hours. So I'll bring you back when that's ready. I'm gonna finish my dishes over here before we move on to the next part. That's a duck egg. <laughs> and duck eggs are a little different. Ugh. I'm not really talented at doing this one handed. So I'm gonna crack a bunch of eggs in here and start some scrambled eggs. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start these scrambled eggs. I might need to turn this down. This is actually the last butter making of this lactation, so it's kind of bittersweet. I will probably use those for uh, some of my recipes, maybe with the muffins or something. Let me lower that. I usually salt my butter and I have not yet, so I'm going to do this. A few more eggs in the in the bag bowl. It's gonna end up being brown butter. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of milk in there. So between the gallon of milk that I have in the fridge, or not the fridge, in the the Instapot, which is ready for the next stage, and this milk. That is all I have for my cow now. It's really actually pretty sad to me. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. Just gonna pour a little bit of milk. Ooh, I gotta put those dishes away. I'm gonna end up making a mess of them. And then. So I'm gonna make these scrambled eggs to go with the sausage and cheese to put in these burritos. I'm going 
going to scramble eggs just a quick stir. Seems like they're cooking on the bottom pretty well. Mm -hmm. So the next stage in this yogurt is to actually cool it down in the fridge or cool it down. I usually do that in the sink. It doesn't have to be. You could actually just let it sit at room temperature until it came down, but it would take a while. So I usually fill up one side of my sink with some cool water. And then I sit my pot down in to the sink of the cool water and kind of whisk it until that temperature has come down. I have a duck right outside the window. So you hear someone laughing at me? Yeah, right now we are at 150. So it's going to take a little bit to cool down. I will just keep kind of whisking the sides and it will cool down a little bit faster. It's almost ready. entertaining would it be if I never made a mess though. It's great. It's kind of boring, right? <laughs> Maybe that's why you're watching. Let's just see what kind of mess I can make, huh? So as soon as it gets to about this um, doneness, my eggs, I always go ahead and turn that heat off because it will continue to heat up or cook. The cast iron is still going to be very hot. So let that cool off just a little bit more. Until it is all the way done. See? Actually, put it on my back burner there to get it off the heat. Now, we are also going to be putting eggs, cheese, and sausage together. Oh, what a mess. Um, so, when we heat these back up, it's going to be heated again. So if these eggs are not totally to your doneness, um, I wouldn't worry about that because you really you're going to reheat them one more time before you eat them. But um, this is not raw anyway. But now we're going to start assembling this. Let me check on the temperature over here. Yeah, we're still at like 130, so we got a little bit on that yogurt. I'm going to go ahead and start assembling our tortillas. Okay, here we go. I'm starting this process. Let's see, we'll do this. I don't know how many cheese burritos we have, but cheese, eggs. Fold this side, fold this side, oh, roll it up. There's your burrito. All right, I'm going to start stacking them up. See, that is one, two, three, seven, seven burritos. These are things are huge. For the kids, I'd probably split these in half. So I might make sausage gravy to freeze with the left over there. And um, put this in a little tortilla I have in the cabinet. 
Yay, one more thing off the list. This is what I use um, when I'm fermenting milk for yogurt or culturing milk for yogurt most of the time. Sometimes the Yocult Lactic Ferments. Um, I believe I got this from New England Cheese Making Company. This I bought at the beginning of my lactation for this cow and you can continue to use it afterwards, but because it's gonna be so long before I'm going to be in milk again, I'm just going to go ahead and finish this off. It's not very much left. And then I will use whatever's left to keep milk going from the store. So I will still buy milk and culture it into yogurt without buying more and more yogurt. Um, I'll just save back some of this yogurt to use as my starter. That is my plan. Okay, we are down to about 110. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out of its cold water. Um, I'm supposed to put about a teaspoon of this in, sprinkle it on the surface, and then give it a few seconds and stir it in. Or not seconds, let's see. I will read the directions. Add the culture and stir. Okay. And stir thoroughly. I think I'm going to go ahead and just add all of this and and we need to stir it thoroughly that's what it says so that was my culture you can add in yogurt from your last batch uh, between a half a cup and a cup for a gallon of milk I don't really feel like I did a whole gallon maybe I did but I don't see very much filled up here and then at this point, you need to incubate. So the best is to try to keep it at this temperature. You could go ahead and put it in half, uh, half gallon containers, or if you wanted to go ahead and put it in quart jars or small containers, you are welcome to do that at this point. And then incubate it in something like the oven with the light on, or wrap it up in towels, stick it in a cooler uh, to keep it at that temperature. Let's see, a dehydrator works. You can also do that. I um, think you need to set it about 110 uh, to try to keep it at that temperature. I just like using my yogurt um, button on my pressure or my Instapot. That is what I'm going to do this time. Stick it in my back in my Instapot. This is one new to me Instapot. Well, it was brand new. I had another Instapot for about seven years, I'm thinking, and I mean, back from a long time ago, I guess, probably when they first came out. So I got this one here recently. Um, it had quit uh, at building up to pressure my other one. So this now just needs to incubate. I can push yogurt and custom. Um, that was if you wanted to boil it, that's the beginning part. We are done with that beginning part. We are going to custom uh, about 10 hours. I'm going to say at 112. We're going to do more like 15 hours, 16 hours, because we are going to let this go overnight. It's 4 o'clock now. I don't want this thing turning off in the middle of the night, so I'm just going to have it go until tomorrow morning, and I will pull it off. And then we will have yogurt made. in the freezer so we have our protein balls finished we have our egg sandwiches finished our egg burritos finished we need to seal up our um, egg sandwiches though and the yogurt going okay. did I push that okay so you really shouldn't put this lid on top all the way um, it'll keep it too warm I had a glass lid for my last instapot but a, this is a larger this is an eight quart so it didn't fit so just kind of, you know, catawampus your lid if you do this. Okay. All right, these have flash frozen so that they will stick together. We're going to go ahead and load them up. I'm not individually wrapping these because I don't want to. And 
we aren't going to have them that long in our freezer. So I'm thinking, let's see, this is six. Seven and eight. We're gonna do eight in a bag. So my husband is starting some meat to take along with us. This is like a pork uh, shoulder or butt, and he cuts it up and does a marinade for it and then we freeze that and as it thaws it will marinate itself here's the pro finished product of this pork in the marinade that we made i will try to give you some idea of what it had in the marinade in the description box maybe we'll see but this was just one pork what is it called a butt yep. or shoulder that we got at costco we divided it into four gallons we double bagged it because these were cheapos from walmart so it's going to go in the freezer and as it thaws it will marinate itself and it'll be delicious it's kind of like um boneless pork shoulder shoulder or Definitely. ribs i think they kind of sell it as like boneless Better pork ribs fire. at costco but we do it on the grill or fire and it'll be delicious i forgot to show you as soon as i took this off this morning i'm going ahead and ladling it into my half gallon jars i was going to uh, strain it off but i don't know we might not uh, maybe we'll see <laughs> i'm kind of feeling like a no um it's nice and warm and sweet right now so i'm gonna go ahead and put it in my jars and put it in the fridge um we like to sweeten it with maple syrup and vanilla what's going down right now is these blueberry lemon muffins I'm gonna go ahead and get them started. Uh, I think I still need to get the milk out, but this looks like all the ingredients. I will take you along. I'm just gonna do them in my big pan bowl, whatever. When I'm done using this bowl for these muffins, what is on my finger? I will decide whether I want to start some sourdough. So I fed my starter last night. It looks nice and bubbly, so I'm definitely gonna use it for something today, but I'm not sure what. I'm kind of thinking either sourdough chocolate chip cookies because that sounds really good to me or we'll do some bread uh, loaves to get in the freezer so here we go we're gonna start these lemon blueberry muffins okay let's see this looks like four cups of flour this says two and a half cups of sugar but we're not doing that much Heck to the no. That is a lot of sugar, so I'm gonna say one cup of sugar will be plenty. Four teaspoons of baking powder. I have no idea where I got this. This is not my recipe. I got it off Pinterest. One, two, three. Don't talk video. Four. Um, but if I can, I will link it. Salt, one teaspoon of salt. And I'm not sure when I wrote it down whether I doubled it or not. If I doubled the ingredients when I wrote them because I double everything. Not sure. Okay, there is my dry ingredients. I am melting some butter in my oven. As you know, I don't have a microwave, so that's how I do it. And it's supposed to be one cup of melted butter and one cup of milk let me grab my milk yes i know this is not how you measure a liquid but <clears throat> so i'm measuring liquid you do you in your kitchen all right and four eggs these are beautiful eggs i always just throw my shells in the sink until i can crunch them up and take them out to the chickens which is um i always do that in the process of uh, cleaning up my kitchen from baking something while they're in the oven so have no fear they don't set too long but like I said this is my kitchen so <laughs> even if it did all right well my butter is not melted so I'm gonna put my milk back so it says to zest one lemon 
That makes me think this isn't doubling the recipe. So I actually got this lemon, lemon juicer. I've never had one of these before, so we'll see if it works well. Cut it in. chickens I don't know that they'll be, eat the scraps from that or not but it'll go to them anyway so this might be double maybe we will find out okay so the only thing missing now is our melted butter which is still melting in the oven butter has finally melted that was one cup of butter I need this to pour it in and then we need to do our blueberries I said butter was the last thing but um nope blueberries that's an important part of blueberry lemon muffins so I sure hope this will make 24 not just 12 because I think my family can eat 24 in one setting <laughs> so, I don't know if this is freezer meal prep or not it might just be breakfast so I'm gonna stir this and then one cup of blueberries one cup of blueberries it was two cups of blueberries now mixing it up and then we'll start putting it in our muffin tray so we're going to stick these in the oven at 350 i think for about 20 minutes I'm not really sure my oven is not working the best okay those are still in the oven i'm going to go ahead and start making my next recipe uh that is lemon poppy seed muffins so i love lemon and my husband does too so this recipe says three cups of flour and one cup of sugar. Uh, there's my sugar. Two tablespoons of poppy seed. I've had these poppy seeds forever. I'm, I'm hoping poppy seeds don't go bad. They don't smell different and they've been sealed up. So I don't know how long I've had them. Two tablespoons poppy seeds, one tablespoon of baking powder, okay, and half a teaspoon of baking soda, and then we will do half a teaspoon of salt. Oh, well good thing. Next comes yogurt, one and a half cups of yogurt, which as you know, we made last night. So, we'll get that out of the fridge. Put that in. Hmm. So, we'll go ahead and take one and a half. Is that what I said? Yes, one and a half cup. There you go. Well done. And then we have the lemon juice and lemon zest. So uh, lemon, this is one and a half tablespoons of lemon zest. We're just gonna do our whole lemon, right? Oh, it smells so good. Can you hear that part? You don't want to go too far down. You don't want to get any of the white part. That's what I've been told. Okay. Let me scrape the back off. I don't know if that's one and a half teaspoons. Tablespoon. Hmm. I think we're just going to call it good enough, right? And let's see. There's a little bit there. Okay, and then we need the juice of this one. I'm going to take a second 
to put the lids on some of my stuff. I don't know. We might go ahead and leave all this out. We might do more. We might not. I also have, you know, eight tablespoons. I have no idea how many tablespoons I really have. But I have some tablespoons in a butter melting in the oven. Alright. I love this thing. <laughs> Don't do that. And there's a seed. Okay. Don't do that this time, okay? Oh yeah. That's heavenly. Alright. Now also two eggs. This is like a green and a blue from our chickens. And then our last ingredient is the melted butter. And it is melted. Look at that. Almost maybe. Yeah, very close. We'll say it's about melted. Yeah. So let me uh, mix this a little bit first so we don't cook our eggs. When we add our top butter. Is that it? Okay. It seems to be. I'm actually going to go ahead and let this cool for a second, this butter cool for a second. Um, we actually have 20 more minutes on our blueberry lemon muffins. So we're going to leave those, this to cool for a little bit before we add this. And this has a little bit of a um, <laughs> glaze. I will probably not do the glaze just because I really don't want to um, make it super sweet. And I don't see that it'll freeze very well with the glaze on top. So we're just going to make this as muffins. I think you can call it breakfast muffins instead of like a dessert muffin if you don't put a topping on it. <laughs> Even though scones usually have a topping and uh, they're supposed to be breakfast too. So I'm not sure if I'm going to make another blueberry or a muffin today. I'm going to kind of take a minute and look while this cools to see if I want to. I have time. <laughs> I've been saying in my videos lately that there is something wrong with my oven. This was 350 and this is six minutes before the timer went off. I've got some that are burnt on the bottom and some that are just fine. Uh, the tops aren't hardly even at all cooked. I Look, it's burnt on the bottom. It makes me so mad. So I'm at a loss now. I'm like, well, do I keep going? Um, well, that's crap. Uh, and these were at the top, you know. I don't know. Tell me what to do. Buy a new oven. I think that's what I need to do. So here we go. I feel really negative because then it's very frustrating. I don't want to spend all my time making muffins and having them burn. The thing is the tops aren't even done all the way. You came here to hear me complain, right? But that's how it works sometimes. You know, we just want it to work all right. right. So I'm supposed to change this temperature to 375. I am not. I'm going to keep it at 350 because it's acting so wonky. And we are just going to bake these at that temperature. Once I get these in the oven, it's supposed to be for like 25 minutes. I'm going to set a timer for 15 and keep an eye on... I wanted to take a second just to tell you thank you so much for coming along with me during this meal prep. If you have any questions about any of the recipes, let me know in the comments below. I forgot to take a picture of like our full on um, accomplishments. I did not. I should have. I was very proud of it. But this video is so long already. So thank you so much for your support. And let me know if you enjoy this and if it was okay to be this long because uh, that's, this is a long video. 
I also made some carrot cake muffins after this, but I did not include that footage in this video because it was just so long. But we accomplished so much today. Thank you for coming with me, and I will see you again next time at our dry, hollow homestead.